Well, we want to bring in KXAN's Josh Hinkle, host of State of Texas. And Josh, a political party has more power when it controls the U.S. House or Senate. So this is by winning a majority of seats in that chamber. We've been focusing on Texas. Now we want to take things nationally. And the party, of course, controls committees. They craft the legislation. They decide what gets onto the floor for a vote. This impacts everybody in the nation, Josh, and in Texas. Yes, and before tonight, Democrats controlled both the House and the Senate, but it was a thin majority. So mm -hmm. what would it take for Republicans to grab the majority in both chambers? Let's start with the House, where every seat was up for grabs tonight, and you need at least 218 for the majority. Republicans only need to gain a handful of seats. Before tonight, they had 212. They need to keep everything else to make that a reality. That's why three South Texas battleground seats tonight were so important to watch. Texas this 28th congressional district along the border was at risk of losing its Democratic stronghold as Republican nominee Cassie Garcia, a former staffer of Senator Ted Cruz, was seeking to unseat Representative Henry Cuellar, who's represented the district for 17 years. The GOP investment in this area shows the party is paying attention to the potential shift in Hispanic voters to flip border districts. The 34th and 15th districts in South Texas were also targets tonight and places Republicans have seen gains recently. A special election this summer flipped the 34th district Republican and both candidates in the 15th district were Hispanic women, which will be a first for representing that part of the Rio Grande Valley and possibly make history again if Democrats lose the district for the first time in more than 150 years. As for the Senate, 35 of those 100 seats were up for grabs tonight and Republicans only needed one of those to clinch the majority in that chamber.